Well, let's speak now to nuclear physicist Kevin Hickerson, who joins us from California. Kevin, thank you for joining us. Great to have you on the programme. And look, we love doing stories like this because not only is it breakthroughs in science, which is fascinating, but it is also a good news story. So look, just tell us how significant this latest breakthrough is. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, uh, this is pretty exciting. Um, Fusion has been a uh, you know, uh, passion of mine for a long time, even since I was a kid. Um, now, it, it, uh, one of the hard parts about Fusion is there's, there's three key components that make it a little bit challenging. And those three components are, one, the amount of energy that comes out has to be more than the energy that uh, goes in. And so far, we haven't really achieved that yet. Um, the other is... Um, the ability for the reaction to stay stable the way it does with a, a, a normal power plant. And then finally, the cost of that reactor is uh, needs to be, uh, you know, achievable. It can't be um, so large that you can't afford that, that power source. That doesn't really uh, help you in the end. But this new result is very exciting because they managed to um, improve some of those components, mainly being able to keep the reaction going for longer than they were able to do before. So that's uh, very exciting, especially in terms of it looking promising for an uh, even bigger research reactor called uh, ITER, which is uh, set to come online in the middle of this uh, decade in France. Well, well, look, we'll come to how long we might have to wait for this to really be significant in terms of climate change. But look, one of the challenges I'm sure for you talking to people like me, laymen essentially, is that you've got to keep this in a simple form. But is this in a simple form creating a mini star inside a machine and then holding it there for a short period of time? Well, that is a good way to look at it. It's it's not 100% accurate, but it's, it's pretty good. Um, what holds a star together is the immense gravity of the star. And so for free, you know, for the, the mass of the sun anyway, or the mass of the star, you get to have that fusion reaction contained inside. But we're not that lucky on Earth. We have to use giant magnets to pinch that energy in. And we also, uh, we don't quite use the, the main fuel that is uh, burning most of the time in a star, which is hydrogen, regular hydrogen. Instead, we use uh, isotopes of hydrogen. In this case, um, with this new reactor, they, and that will be the case with ITER, is uh, using deuterium and tritium, which is just heavy hydrogen and sometimes called heavy, heavy hydrogen. But those are naturally abundant, and they're in the ocean, and uh, they're, they're around us all the time. So um, as fuel sources, they're, they're pretty cheap. Uh, and it produces low carbon, low radiation energy, which, of course, is a very green source of energy. But the big question, how long before it could be mass produced to perhaps help, uh, you know, help the countries around the world lower their carbon emissions? Well, I think that's really where the, the tricky part of being too excited about fusion is. Um, while I, I love the research and I'm excited about it as a scientist, um, when compared to another sort, form of nuclear fuel, which is regular fission, uh, that already works. That's already cost effective. There are already many countries in the world that have these plants running. And if our goal is to reduce carbon emissions as soon as possible, I'm, I think that's actually a much more uh, a better strategic direction to go. Um, I'm very excited about the future of fusion someday, but we've been promised for a long time that it, it was just around the corner. And the progress on this is just taking a long time. And so I, I don't think that we should be relying on this as anything other than an exciting promise for the future, not necessarily something we're all going to switch on and, and plug our laptops in tomorrow. Um, you know, as, as, as much as I want that to be the case, I, I don't see that as being um, an option at the moment. OK, well, we keep our fingers crossed for further developments. But for the moment, thank you very much indeed. That's Kevin Hickerson there, nuclear physicist joining us from California.